हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी टेक्नोलॉजी टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द सीमॉस प्रोसेसेस इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द टू थाउजेंड्स टेक्नोलॉजी वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन हाउ द सीमॉस प्रोसेस वॉज इवॉल्विंग इन द नाइनटीन एंड हाउ वी हैड द सम सिग्निफिकेंट चेंजेस इन द सीमॉस प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी इन द नाइनटीन सो लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट ऑल प्रोसेस चेंजेस वी एनकाउंटर्ड इन द ईयर टू राइट एंड आफ्टर दैट ऑल्सो सो नाउ कम to the state of art technology so the state of art technology is the 2000s technology now here we will be having the feature size of 0.13 micrometer or even smaller than that wafer size would be 200 mm or even 300 mm right so this is a very significant change that we had the feature size is further reduced in the 2000 year right after that we have the silicon non insulator which was uh, used with the shallow trench isolation for the isolation formation right so here we are going to discuss what all changes we encountered in the year 2000 after the year 1990 so when i was using soi with sti it was completely isolating the transistor on the silicon surface from the bulk silicon substrate which was downside it right so it eliminated the radiation induced soft error so this is a very big advantage of using the silicon non insulator so a lot of people are confused why we are moving towards the silicon non insulator because it is involving a lot of process steps to fabricate it but now we have understood what is the significance of soi chips right it is going to reduce the soft error so here in the year 2000 we will be having the increase in the packing density of the ic chips right so we will be having the output the packaged output to be a very compact structure we will be having high radiation resistance and soi chips will become the mainstream for the high performance electronics because in the electronics we are using them as a transmitter or the receiver so when the it is used as a transmitter it is having high radiation resistance it is going to radiate more and this is how i will be getting more radiations which can go and travel up to a longer distance so it will be used the as a mainstream material for the high performance electronics right so now copper and the low dielectric constant dielectric is also used to reduce the rc delay i told you copper is a technology of the future and r and d is still going on on copper as well so we should understand that we were using the copper and low dielectric constant material which is going to increase the speed and it is going to overcome the electro migration problem that was encountered by the aluminium metallization as well so it is going to give me lower power consumption and high ic speed as well so copper can be deposited with the help of dual demersins process it is a two dielectric etching process we will be not be having any metal etch so we will be having two dielectric etch and one metal etch and in the traditional process we will be having one dielectric etch and one metal etch so it is using the metal cmp instead of metal etching so the main challenge was dielectric etch because it was hard to etch out the dielectric with the small dielectric constant and the metal deposition and the metal polishing also so now coming to the copper metallization the copper metallization will be used Uh, the copper seed layer deposition then tantalium or tantalium nitride barrier layer deposition then the copper electrochemical plating for the bulk copper deposition after that we will be doing the annealing and the cmp right so this is how we will be having a lot of increased process steps so we are going to talk in detail about all of them after that we have the low dielectric constant dielectric which is still in r and d and we can use the cvd and spin on dielectric also So CVD is a familiar technology we all know about it it is a existing process which is having the equipment as well as experience with the experienced persons we can easily do the CVD but SOD right SOD is spin on dielectric which is extendability to very low dielectric constant with porous silica right so whenever i have a substance or dielectric with a very low dielectric constant i can shift towards the SOD so you can see this is how the state of art soi cmos ic with the copper and low dielectric constant interconnection will be looking like so you can see we have here the multi layer metallization so don't get very scared about this structure we are not having any complex structure as this structure so don't get scared here we will be having the simple ic 
right so this is the ic and we are having the multi layer metallization over here right so here we will be having the connection to the packaging with the help of lead tin alloy so this is how we can make this chip so let's see all of the steps for the fabrication of this type of chip so first of all we will be having the bare wafer which is the p kind of wafer surface so this is the p type of doped silicon surface which is used as the wafer after that i am going to uh, incorporate it with the high current oxygen ion implantation so i am going to incorporate oxygen ions or with the help of the oxygen ions we will be having the buried sio2 layer inside the p wafer so with the help of the buried sio2 layer because we were using here the high current oxygen ion implantation the oxygen will penetrate from the surface and it is going deeper inside the p wafer and this is how we will be getting a buried sio2 layer after that we are going to do the oxide anneal so that we will be getting a single crystal structure after that we will be doing the wafer cleaning and then the epitaxial silicon layer deposition so this is how over the buried sio2 we will be having the p type of epitaxial layer after that we will be doing the wafer cleaning and then oxidation oxidation for the formation of a thin screen oxide layer so you can see over the p type of epitaxial region we will be having a thin oxide layer right so after that we will be doing the photoresist coating and the baking after that we will be having the mask zero which is i am going to align with the photoresist right after that i am going to the exposure phase and then the peb development and the inspection phase right with the help of development and inspection i am going to etch out the photoresist at the particular location then after that if i etch out the oxide i will be etch out etching out the silicon as well then i am going to stripping off the photoresist right this is how i have stripped off the screen oxide also so i have cleaned this surface right so i will be having now a clean p type of epitaxial layer now i will be again cleaning it and now i will be having highly clean without any contaminant p type of epitaxial layer then again i am going to do the oxidation i am going to deposit the pad oxide layer after that i will be doing the lpcvd lpcvd is a low pressure chemical vapor deposition of the silicon nitride after that i will be again doing the photoresist coating and the baking and after that i will be using the mask one for the shallow trench isolation right first mask i will be using for sti formation and you can see after that we have the alignment and the exposure phase in which i align the mask at a particular location and i will be exposing it with the help of uv light to change the characteristics of the photoresist over here after that i will be going to the peb development and the inspection phase and after that i am going to etch out the nitride as well as the pad oxide layer this is how i have formed the mask over here right i am going to strip off the photoresist it is no longer required and then i am going to etch out the silicon from the epitaxial layer as well so you can see here i don't have any silicon and i have made the trenches over here okay so first of all i had made the shallow trench i will be doing the wafer cleaning after that again i will be doing uh, an oxidation process for the barrier oxide layer deposition right here i will be having a barrier oxide layer at the surface of the p type of epitaxial layer right after that i will be using the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition to deposit the undoped silicate glass for the formation of shallow trench isolation so here i have uh, deposited the undoped silicate glass and here it is having some peaks because here we we were having the trenches and here it is depositing on this surface so here we will be having roughness present on this surface and for that uh, removal of the roughness i will be using the cmp right after that the nitride is no longer required i will strip off the nitride and after that i will be stripping off the pad oxide as well so now you can see here if i strip off the pad oxide as well as nitride you can see we will be having a very smooth structure with the shallow trench isolation layers of the undoped silicate glass and in between we have the p type of epitaxial regions after that i am going to do the wafer cleaning again i will be doing the oxidation process for the deposition of the sacrificial oxide over the p type of epitaxial region over here 
as well as over here after that i am going to do the photo resist coating as well as baking and after that i will be using the mask 2 which is the n well mask right this mask is used for the formation of n well after that again alignment and exposure development and ex inspection and then i will be having the n well implantation you can see here we have implanted the n well and after that i can implant the vt adjustment uh, implantation so you can see we have done the pmos vt adjustment implantation with the boron ions the photo resist is going to stop the boron ions at this type of epitaxial region and here at this type of epitaxial region we will be having the boron ions implanted in the n well so after that i am going to strip off the photo resist again i will be coating coating it with the photo resist again i will be baking it i will be using a mask for the p well and after that we are going for the alignment and the exposure phase again peb development and the inspection phase and you can see again i am using the boron ions for the p well implantation now here we will be having p well over here after that i am going to have the n mos threshold voltage at, uh, implantation for that i will be using the phosphorus ions here we will be having the threshold voltage implantation after that i don't require the photo resist i am going to strip off the photo resist after that i am going to strip off the sacrificial oxide as well you can see now i don't have any oxide layer over the surface after that i am going to the wafer cleaning then the gate oxidation now i am going to make the oxide for the gate again after that i am going to deposit the amorphous silicon or the polysilicon with the help of lpcvd process here you can see we have the alpha silicon which is deposited over the gate oxide and after that i can use a photo resist i can use a gate and local interconnection mask and i can do the alignment and exposure peb development and the inspection and this is how i can make the photo resist mask right and after that i will be going to the etching out of the polysilicon or amorphous silicon that we are using and this is how we will be having the alpha silicon layer above that we will be having the photo resist i can strip off the photo resist and this is how i have made the gates and then i can do the wafer cleaning and then the polysilicon alleling and the oxidation so that the polysilicon will be now not damaged polysilicon we will be having some advantageous polysilicon which is going to work well as the gate polysilicon after that we will be having the photo resist coating and baking and after that i will be having the mask 5 which is and mos slightly lobed drain implantation we are going to align and exposure the mask after that peb development and the inspection phase after that we will be having the photo resist and the mask over here and i will be doing the lightly dope drain implantation with the help of anti money ions right so here we will we will be having the anti money ion implantation inside this structure in the b well after that i am going to strip off the photo resist the photo resist coating and the baking stage would be there again then the pmos ldd implantation same ldd implantation is done for the pmos now again i will be doing the alignment and the exposure peb development and the inspection phase after that i will be having the ldd implantation with the help of the boron ions in the bf2 ions in the pmos right so for the boron ion i am using the bf2 ion right for, then i will be stripping off the photo resist i will be de depositing the undoped silicate glass and then i will be depositing the nitride and then i will be using the nitride and the usg etch back process right for making the side wall spacer right so here i have the side walls that are present on the gate right after that i will be having the photo resist coating and baking then i will be using the mask 7 that is and mos source and drain implantation after that i will be moving towards the alignment and the exposure phase and you can see i will be having after that development and the inspection phase and i will be de uh, depositing or uh, implanting source and drain with the help of and mos source and drain implantation with the help of arsenic ion so you can see here we will be having the implantation of the arsenic ions which is forming the source and the drain similarly we can uh, strip off the photo resist and we can do the same process to form the source and drain in the pmos right so we will be having the photo resist coating and baking the pmos implantation mask alignment and exposure development and inspection and after that i will be using the boron ions to form the source and drain in the pmos right so the implantation will be having the boron ion implantation then i am going to strip off the photo resist and the rapid thermal annealing and this is how we have formed 
the given transistor or the MOSFET inside the given chip. So I hope you understood in the 2000s technology how we can make any component the transistor or the MOSFET inside a given chip or in a wafer. So after that I am going through the argon sputtering edge. The cobalt and the titanium nitride sputtering deposition will be done. So you can see here we will be having cobalt or the titanium nitride deposition over the structure. After that we will be having the rapid thermal annealing and this is how we have formed the cobalt silicide over here, over here and over here. The extra cobalt or the titanium nitride we are going to strip off. So we will be having stripping off phase for titanium nitride and the cobalt and here we will be having the cobalt silicide at the surface right. So after that we will be having the PECVD of the nitride right which is the plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition of the nitride. So above all of these things we will be having the nitride layer. And after that we will be having high density plasma chemical vapor deposition of the phosphosilicate glass. So you can see we have the phosphosilicate glass layer present over here. We, we will be doing the CMP to make this structure a smoother surface. Then we will be having the photoresist coating and baking. Then the mask 9 for the contact and the local interconnection formation. And then the alignment and exposure for this mask. PEB development and inspection for this mask. And this is how we will be having the masking of the photoresist. And then we can etch out the phosphosilicate glass and this is how we have formed all of the trenches at the desired location at the uh, end well. In the P type of source and drain we have made the trenches and the N type of source and drain we have made the trenches. Now we are going to strip off the photoresist and then we are going to have the argon sputtering edge and after that we will be having titanium and the titanium nitride sputtering deposition which is acting as a titanium nitride glue or the barrier layer right after that we will be having the tungsten chemical vapor deposition and this is how we will be having the deposition of the tungsten over here right so this sky blue color represents the tungsten metal deposition over here after that i will be using the tungsten titanium nitride and the titanium cmp and this is how we will be having tungsten deposition inside the desired local interconnection for the formation of the interconnection in between the desired components which are present locally right so in the neighboring component if i want to make the connection i will be using this technique so now we are doing the plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition of the silicon carbide for the formation of the seal layer right here we will be having the seal layer after that we are having the spin on dielectric coating so here we will be having sod coating right after that we will be having sod cure and then PECVD of the silicon carbide edge stop layer right so here we will be having one a silicon carbide edge stop layer and after that again we will be having SOD coating and the curing and then we will be having the PETOS capping layers so this is the gray layer is a PETOS layer actually this is a TEOS layer which is deposited with the plasma enhanced technology right so after that we will be having photoresist coating and baking then I will be using the 10th mask for the formation of wire one and then again I will be going to the alignment and the exposure PEB development and the inspection phase and then we will be etching out the PETOS and the SOD and we will be stopping on the silicon carbide so this is the end point that we have okay so to stop we have to find out the end point and for end point we are using this silicon carbide layer over here right after that i will be stripping off the photoresist then i can use the photoresist coating and baking and then i can use the mask 11 which is the trench mask right so this is a trench one that is we are forming right so again i will be going through the alignment and the exposure phase and then peb development and the inspection phase and after that we are going to etch out so here you can see we have made the mask over here the, the trench is over here the mask is here and now i'm going to etch out this thing right so i'm going out going to etch out this uh, silicon carbide layer as well as the sod layer and this is how i have made the trenches after that i am going to strip off the photoresist it is no longer requ required after that we will be having argon sputtering clean okay so here you can see we have a clean structure now after that we will be having tantalium and tantalium nitride barrier layer physical vapor deposition so this is the outermost covering of the tantalium or the tantalium nitride that we have after that we will be having copper seed layer physical vapor deposition this is the copper seed layer that is deposited over here and after that we will be having the bulk copper electrochemical plating so we will be using the electrochemical plating which is also called ecp of the copper so here you can see we have the bulk copper deposition 
after that we will be doing the copper annealing and after that we will be doing the copper tantalum and the tantalum nitride cmp so that we will be getting a smoother surface over here right after that we will be having the pecvd of the silicon carbide and with the help of this silicon carbide we are forming again a seen layer so over this seal layer we are going to have the spin on dielectric coating sod coating and after that we will be having sod curing right after that we will be having silicon carbide at stop layer again i will be having sod coating and curing and then we will be having peteos capping layer after that we will be applying the photoresist coating and the baking then again we are actually repeating all of the steps so i will be using the mask 12 the metal trench 2 mask right and this is how we will be having alignment exposure peb development and the inspection phase and this is how we are uh, doing the masking right the mask is masking is done then we are going to etch out this layer as well as sod layer so this is how we have etched out the uppermost layer and the sod layer and we have found out the end point with the silicon carbide layer right we will be stopping on the silicon carbide layer then we will be stripping off the photoresist after that again i will be having the photoresist coating and baking for the wire 2 mask and here i will be using the wire 2 mask and then alignment and exposure peb development and the inspection then we will be doing the wire to etching with the help of the photoresist mask and here you can see this is the wire to hose that are formed after that we are going to strip off the photoresist right after that we will be having the hydrogen plasma cleaning right here we are shifting to the hydrogen plasma cleaning then we will be having tantalum and the tantalum nitride barrier layer pvd right so again you can see over all of the surfaces we will be having the tantalum and the tantalum nitride barrier layer deposition right after that we will be having the copper seed layer pvd so this is how we will be having a seed layer deposition after that we will be having the bulk copper electrochemical plating and this is how we will be having the bulk copper deposited here after that copper annealing and the copper tantalum and the tantalum nitride cmp so after that we will be having again all of the structures and all of the steps repeated after that pecvd of silicon carbide sod coating and curing again silicon carbide deposition for the at stop layer again we will be using the photoresist coating and baking we will be using the via 3 mask for alignment and exposure with the photoresist right and then peb development and the inspection then etch out the silicon carbide right after that we will be stripping off the photoresist and this is how we will be having sod curing and the coating and then we will be having peteos capping structure over here after that we will be having photoresist coating and baking and then we will be using the metal trench 3 mask that is the mask 15 again alignment and exposure peb development and the inspection dielectric etch and this is how we will be having the uh, the trenches over here right so this is how we have stripped off the photoresist again i will be going to the cleaning phase with the help of hydrogen plasma cleaning i am going to clean the surface then the copper tantalum and the tantalum nitride deposition and the chemical metallical polishing right so this is how we will be having the copper metallization present over here so after that we will be having the silicon carbide sod silicon carbide sod and peteos structure so all of these processes we are repeating and then we will be using the photoresist coating alignment exposure peb and the development this is how we have formed the mask in the photoresist again then we will be having the via 4h and then strip off the photoresist then pr coating and the alignment exposure peb and the development phase again all of these processes to make this mask of the photoresist again and then again we are going to etch out the trench in the sod right we are going to stop on the silicon carbide then we are going to strip off the photoresist so again we will be having the hydrogen plasma cleaning and copper tantalum and the tantalum nitride deposition and the cmp and silicon carbide sod sic sod and the peteos deposition again these four layers are repeated and then uh, the photoresist coating alignment and exposure peb and the development phase we have made the mask in the in the photoresist and now we will be etching the via 5 and after that we will be having the strip off phase of the photoresist after after that we will be having the pr coating alignment and exposure peb and the development phase again i will be making a mask over here after that i am going to have the dielectric etching phase and after that we will be stripping off the photoresist again hydrogen plasma cleaning and the copper tantalum and the tantalum nitride deposition and the cmp this is how we have formed the fifth layer of the copper metallization after that we will be forming the pecvd 
passivation layer the passivation layer is formed with the help of nitride psg and the nitride so here first of all we will be having a nitride layer then the phosphosilicate glass layer and again the nitride layer for the passivation layer formation then we will be having the pr coating alignment and exposure peb and the development and with the help of this i will be making a mask over here then we are going to etch out the passivation layer right so here we will be making the connection with the fifth layer of the metallization with the outside world right so after that we are going to strip off the photoresist then we will be having the polyamide coating and then we will be sending this uh, a uh, chip to the test and the packaging phase then we will be stripping off the polyamide and then we will be having the argon sputtering etching and then we will be having the crcu and the au liner coating so you can see these are the liner coatings that we have over here after that we will be having the lead tin alloy coating so this is the lead tin alloy coating we will be having and then we will be having the photoresist coating alignment and exposure peb and the development after that we will be forming a mask and after that we will be having okay so the mask is formed here i don't want this latin alloy over this surface so i will be etching out it with the help of the photoresist so i will be having the metal etch over here and after that i will be removing the photoresist and then i will be having the lead tin alloy reflow and this is after the reflow the lead tin alloy will be having a smoother structure like this and i hope you understood the full structure like this so now coming to the summary we have talked about the cmos ic chip that was dominating the C, uh, semiconductor industry after the 1980s the demand for the the digital electronics such as the electronic watches calculator and the personal computers was rising and for that we were using the cmos technology in the chips so in the 1980s we had 3 micron to sub micron device multi layer metallization tungsten cvd dielectric cvd and the metal sputtering we were having side wall spacer for ldd plasma etching was generally replaced with the wet etching in the all patterning etch process tappers became popular for alignment and exposure while projection system were widely used in the 1990s we were having 0.8 micron to 0.18 micron feature size silicide were used for the gate and the local interconnection cmp was widely used for the tungsten polishing and the dielectric planarization the rtp is widely used for the annealing processes after that we were using the high density plasma sources which were used for the etching cvd sputtering cleaning and the sputtering deposition we were using the ozone teos oxide cvd process which was commonly used for shallow trench isolation pmd and imd deposition right after that we were using the electrochemical plating which is used for the copper metallization process i hope you understood all of these things i have already talked about the 2000s technology in this video itself if you have any doubt you can refer the books that i have already suggested if you continue watching this playlist you will be understanding about the packaging in the upcoming videos i hope you like this video if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel and also share it with your friends thank you so much